Hi guys, Alexia here from Shitty Graveler, and I'm back with uh, Resident Evil 7, an update on uh, uh, travel, and an update on uh, the, the training for Training Week 7. So... As usual, let's start with the background uh, that you can see on the screen. This is one of the places I love going to when I just need to distress and uh, like get away from everything. This is Mpangano Island. The picture is taken from Mpangano Island. Where we're looking at, we're looking at the mainland uh it's a beautiful place to go to get away from everything it's an island uh, on lake victoria small island not too big but it's got some really it used to have some really nice trails so i would go there with my bike and uh during the day chill on the beach uh, have a beer and early in the morning and late in the evening i would do like a a, a, a loop either around the edge of the, the island or across the island. Around the edge of the island is a bit flat, about 30 kilometers. And if you go through the center of the island, there's a climb, again, about 30 kilometers. Beautiful place, quite inexpensive. So, you know, if you're on a budget, if you like holidaying on a budget like me, it's a perfect place to go to. I have so many beautiful pictures of, of Mpangano. Anyway, Mpangano Island. If you ever want to go there, <clears throat> hit me up. Um, stay at Siambi Resort. Um, yeah, and um, talk to Martin. Tell Martin that Alex sent you and uh, he'll give you a discount. Anyway, so that's Mpangano Island. That's Lake Victoria. Okay, guys, very quickly, I want to make it brief today. Not much has happened in week training week seven uh, that I can dwell upon for long. So first, the travel update. <clears throat> As you can remember, last Monday, we went uh, for the visa interview. Our documents were accepted. Um, and that was on, on Monday. That's when I went for the interview. Uh, by Tuesday evening, we were, this was the status. Sorry, on Monday, on, by Tuesday evening, this was the status. Uh, application transferred to consulate. Yeah, that's Tuesday evening, last week. Uh, by Wednesday, it was showing this. By Wednesday, it was showing this. So you see it had moved one more step. So you see over here, in process was grayed out, not reached. And by Wednesday last week, it was showing in process, pending. So my only concern is that it's been at pending since Wednesday till today. In fact, I was hoping that by the time I do this video, there might have been some movement to the next step, but there hasn't been. So I'm actually a bit concerned. I'm gonna give them a call tomorrow and see what's going on. You know, like, cause I'm supposed to travel on Sunday, this, this Sunday. So if I don't get, um, if I don't get, uh, if I don't get the visa, then I'll have to do, I have to, I'll have to rebook, um, the, the air ticket that uh, was already supposed to be for, for, for Sunday. I don't know how that will work out and so many other things. Anyway, so um, since, depending on how things go, I might have an update. I might do an update, uh, an out of cycle update because our updates have been on Monday. But if something happens, I'll, I'll, update on the Facebook page um, as, as need be, okay? 
So that's travel. You're waiting for the visa. <clears throat> At least it has not given us red saying attention, meaning something is wrong or missing. So, <clears throat> so far, so good. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to uh, our training progress. <clears throat> so you can see. Uh, guys, oh, the background has changed. This is another magical place. Look at those hills. This was in uh, Lesotho. We went for Le it's a race called Lesotho Sky. Beautiful XC. Quite technical, more technical than any other XC race I've done. But let's finish with the update. Uh, hopefully the picture will still be there. <clears throat> so... Um, <clears throat> Very quickly, those are our weekly progresses. As you can see, we built up. We had a peak at 769, and then you've been coming down. Again, as I said last week, we are sort of in the taper, uh, in the taper uh, part of our training. So I'm reducing the volume and in intensity. A bit, although it seems like it's not working. We we'll look, we we'll look at that just now. But as you can see, this week, training week seven that just ended yesterday, uh, Strava, according to my efforts, Strava has given me a score of one ninety five, which is the lowest we have ever gotten. But that sort of falls in line with less intensity and less volume um, in an effort to reduce the load and start the taper. Remember, we have about less than two weeks now, maybe about 12 days left to um, the race, the actual race. So that's what Strava says, okay? Then if you come to training peaks, so that's what training peak says. So over here, we go from up to down like this. Then we go from up to down like this, 82, 85, 88. So remember last week I predicted we'll be at around 87. So quite close. We got three extra. I really doubt <clears throat> if at the end of this week we'll be at 90 because the volume is going to go down. But as you can see, Fatigue actually went up and uh, our form also dropped by, just by one. Uh, fitness has gone up. So during the taper process, the, the tr the, what we want to do is maintain the fitness level that we have, but reduce fatigue and improve form. Um, yeah, so... That means you can't stop cycling altogether or working out altogether because if you stop working out, then your fitness also goes down. Uh, but then um, you, we will have to do a bit less distance uh, or less volume, uh, less intensity, uh, or we do short, intense um, workouts because that will help keep the fitness uh, but then not load as much fatigue. Yeah, and actually, you don't even have to worry about form. Once your fatigue starts dropping, your form improves automatically. Yeah, uh, so that's where we are with the, with the training peaks. So week eight, at the end of this week, hopefully by Monday, I'll be in Belgium, hopefully. Uh, if I'm not... I'll do uh, an update for week eight from here. If I find myself in Belgium, I'll do an update of week eight in Belgium. Anyway, we'll see, guys. So that's how it looks on training picks, okay? All right. We go to the training log, and that's our Strava training log. <clears throat> so week six was 283 kilometers. And um, 
last so week seven which just ended yesterday was two 23 kilometers so about 60 kilometers less as i said we are tapering we are reducing volume and effort so um, as you can see we still rode almost every other day uh but the sessions were were shorter yeah and lesson a lot of them were zone two apart from this structured set that i did uh on wednesday but then this was zone two this was zone two this was zone two and then again i rested saturday and yesterday i had we i did like a serious training ride uh, in Mukoyuni. We'll look at it just now. Today I managed to put in a, a swim. Uh, as much as it's a rest day, the swim actually helps me relax. And um, so I, I felt good both last week and, and this week. I, I added a few more lengths today. So yeah, so and that's it in terms of training, guys. How the training week went? Uh, as I said on um, on um, yesterday Sunday, I I went to Mukuyuni. Mukuyuni is uh, maybe about an hour and a half drive away from Nairobi, and uh, we did a huge effort. Yeah, with I went to my friend called Shane, my my riding partner. And um, look at that, guys. Boom. Climb one, climb two. Uh, we had lunch somewhere in the middle here. Climb three, climb four, and then boom, down. Yeah. Uh, 60 kilometers, about 2,200 meters climbing. That first climb is crazy because you just start and you go in for six kilometers at 7.8 percent look at that 44 minutes you're climbing <laughs> 44 minutes and when you say that when you see the average is 7.8 percent that means there are bits that are maybe up to 15 percent easily easily but guys it's a beautiful place to go riding so this is Nairobi. Here is Nairobi. Yeah. Here is Nairobi and here is Mukuyuni. So it's in Machakos. It's in Makweni County. Uh, but you come through Machakos to, to, to come here. And it's around these Mboni Hills. Uh, and, you know, it's just a matter of looking for trails weaving in and out. But a beautiful, beautiful place for XCMTB uh, gravel. I don't think so. Uh, I took some videos, so I'll I'll do a video. Uh, so that's Shane. Uh, that's us starting off with some chapo and some uh, omelette, and there we go. That's the first climb. Climbed into the forest. Beautiful forests. And as much as it's dry, it's been dry in this region for maybe the last four or five months, it's still so cool in the forest. Really, really nice. Yeah, that's shame. And actually, this ridge that he's pointing onto, there's a road from the beginning of the ridge till the end. Uh, also a very beautiful ride. Uh, a lot... Okay, not a lot, but more and more tarmac coming, being being laid in these uh, areas. This road used to be a dirt climb, and now today we, dis we yesterday we discovered that now it's a tarmac, a long, long almost ten kilometers of trail that that used to be good. It was a, a good good uh, uh, climb uh, on MTB. Now it's a tarmac, uh, tarmac road. Look at that, how steep it is. Yeah, that's us crossing a river. Yeah, and yesterday it was 12 days to World Gravel Championship. So today it's 11 days. Yeah. Um, so this, you see this climb, guys, over here? Let me show you. It's the climb after lunch, this one, that one. 
that used to be an off-road climb. Now it's a uh, uh, now it's a uh, it's all tarmac. And actually here, uh, you'll see even the difference. Uh, let's see my efforts. Look at that. From 56 minutes to 44 minutes. I call it was 12. Okay, fine. Obvious, I've become slightly stronger, but still 12 minutes just because of uh, the tarmac. Yeah, and I did this just before we went to Cape Epic 56. I really, really pushed. So anyway, guys, that was the ride on Sunday. Beautiful out there. If you love XC MTB, I recommend uh, you go check it out. And I think that's it, guys. So that's pretty much it. Um, so this week was the plan. Oh, yeah, before I forget. The plan this week, again, I'm going to reduce the the volume and intensity. I'm just going to make them zone two rides. Uh, I will ride three days. So I'm going to ride tomorrow, Tuesday. I'll ride Wednesday. I'll ride Thursday. Friday, I'm going to rest. Saturday, I'm going to rest. And on Sunday, we have uh, a race. Remember I told you we have a... Um, let me see. Let me get it again. We have a... Uh, we have a, we have a, it's called the Grand Nairobi bike race on the 29th. So I'm going to go out there and see how much power I can hold. Yeah. It's going to be a good uh, gauge for, um, it's going to be a good gauge for, for the world championships. So, so this is going to be Sunday morning and hopefully if the visa comes, we travel Sunday evening. So that's the plan for the day. Three rides, two rest days, and one rest day on Sunday. Uh, I'll update you on how that goes. And uh, for now, guys, that's it. Um, let's see. What was it? There's something else I wanted to... Yeah, oh, before before I let you go. Just one more minute. Don't go, guys. As I said, this is Lesotho, Lesotho Sky. I went to Lesotho. It's a, it was a four-day MTB race. What my actually my first or my second international outing for just purely for MTB. Swaziland, you know what they say, it's it's the roof of the world, yeah? Like there's no spot in Swaziland, Lesotho, sorry, Lesotho, lower than I think 2,000 meters. It's like crazy, yeah? Uh -huh. And mountains all over the place, beautiful. They have like real winters in Lesotho, yeah? Uh, very quickly, just hold on, guys. So, guys, I have this. It's a Garmin uh, Enduro 2 that I'm trying to sell. So, if you are in the market for a sport watch, uh, hit me up. Yeah. I bought it for, uh, it was quite expensive when I bought it. I bought it for about, uh, uh, let me see. I bought it for, let's see. Let's, let's see here. Enduro. Enduro. Uh, here is, I bought it for about a thousand euros. Uh, and at this time the euro was like maybe about 140. So it was about 140 K. Um, right now, uh, you can, they've just released Enduro 3, Enduro 3, Enduro 3 Kenya, Enduro 3 Kenya, Enduro 3 Kenya is going to cost you, in Kenya is going to cost you about 120,000 and I'm selling this for 90 G's. So... And there's no much difference between this and the Enduro 3. You can do your online research. So if you have the, if you're looking for a sport watch, hit me up. Perfect working condition. 
Um, yeah, I love it, but uh, I don't need it. So, 90 Gs, um, let me know if you're interested. Okay, guys, thank you so much uh, once again for your support. I'll update you on the visa uh, process. As soon as I get any information, I'll post something on Facebook. And um, till that post, um, take care of yourselves. Uh, once again, I don't take uh, any of your support for granted. Thank you so much. Uh, stay tuned and stay shady. And this is Alex, and I'm out. Bye-bye.